Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Shannon. Today we are discussing why it is absolutely important for you to set boundaries, not only to move your life forward, but to bring you closer to the Father. You have to have boundaries. A boundary is like what we see those huge cement blocks on the highway. And they are there to do what? Divide. Keep the opposite going traffic in its lanes and where you're headed in your lanes. If there's an accident, friends, have you ever noticed that those cement partitions that's right there in the middle, the, those divides, they never move. You could, A car could be going 70, 80 miles an hour, and if that car has a collision, the cement blocks don't move. And that's how boundaries should be. Once you set your boundaries, friends, this is every area of your life with your children, your spouse, with your coworkers, everybody, you need to have boundaries. And then you learn to practice not being a respecter of persons. Because once you become a respecter of persons, friends, you will find that a lot of compromise that enter your life and you will begin to displease the father because God is not a respecter of persons and neither should we. And we have to work on that. We have to resist the temptation of being a respecter of persons because it is sin. But this is what I want us to take a look at. Five things that you need to know once you begin to set boundaries. I'm telling you, friends, your life will forever change. You'll go to a new space, a new place in your spiritual walk with God because at the end of the day, we need boundaries because we are on a journey and we are destined for eternity. Our destination is eternity. Therefore, we we got to be picky who we uh, communicate with. We have to be picky uh, who we let near us, friends. You got to be like a hawk because without the, those boundaries, you'll keep going backwards. You'll be stagnant. You'll keep getting beat down. So let's look at five reasons why you need these boundaries, friends, to advance your life. And remember, you need not just external boundaries for, for people from with outside, but you need internal boundaries to, to deal with yourself. For instance, let's take a look at an example of an internal boundary. For me, um, here's a very practical boundary. I do not like my living space, my residence, disheveled. And my sons know I'm funny. <laughs> but I'm not OCD. But I do like everything to stay where it belongs because when I'm working in my little home office, it's so it's it is so much in it because as you all, some of you may not know, but I have an outreach ministry through the mail and I spend most of my time inside of my home office right there packaging and, and organizing. You got to constantly keep organizing and tightening up the space so that what? You could keep order. So my boundaries, when, when they're reached far as what my eye see, because my eye gate, I like stuff neat. So when it gets disheveled, when I'm working on a lot of uh, outgoing mail, I try to get to the mail, to the post office every day at a certain time, and I be trying to keep everything flowing. So when it gets disarrayed, which sometimes it do because I'm working, I'm multitasking. I got that person's uh, package ready. That one ain't ready. I'm pulling gifts. I'm, pull, I'm pulling this. I'm pulling that. I got a whole lot going on in my space. So my boundary is very simple, but I enforce it daily for me. I, I clean as I go. Or if I work on a project and it gets terribly disarrayed, I go immediately to it to clean it back up. Because why? I'm working with limited space and, and I, I have a lot that I'm trying to stay on top of. Friends, you all have no idea how many emails and how many uh, things we're doing behind the scenes. People think you just make videos. We are a full-time ministry. Sister Charity's the administrator. We got a wonderful team. We got Sister Pam. We got Sister Monica who does the um, the outreach pantry. She's busy. Charity's busy. We got the intercessors. Everybody's busy. And we're trying to 
keep everything flowing. So I'm very protective about my boundary, my internal boundary, when I start feeling some kind of way because of my outward uh, environment. So you want to set internal boundaries with yourself to to uh, bring you advancing in peace and joy. So, for instance, too, when I leave out the home or my residence, my sons, they know everything has to be put away and nice and neat. So I tell them when we come back home, everything looks beautiful and you're ready to just come in and drop down and enjoy yourself. But who wants to come back to a hottie mess? So these are practical internal things that you set for yourself. And then your external boundaries, these are the most important because when people in, encroach upon you, your heart and your mind, they could destroy you. So you got to set boundaries, friends. And also, let me say this about your internal boundary. If you have been delivered from an individual, from a substance, or you have put away sin, and in order for us to maintain that, you got to have those boundaries set up. And let's look at this, friends. Hey, if you know that you used to be very promiscuous and you were very lustful and God has set you free from that that bondage of sin, those chains are broken off your life, you can't be communicating with lustful sexual type people. See, some people, their whole communication is sexual. They're just, they're just nasty. <laughs> they are. So you don't want to find yourself in daily communication with such a person. You got to set that boundary. And you can discern when a person's spirit is very provocative. And, and y'all know what I'm talking about. You, you got to set that boundary and hurry up and shut them down. So anyway, let's move on to number one that you can expect this. Once you start setting boundaries for yourself, you have to be the enforcer. You will lose friends. And sometimes it may be family because your 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 standards or your boundaries, you're not going to let nobody just come on, co you know, collide with you and win. You're going to say, no, that's my boundary. I don't want you feed my kids junk food when, when they visit with you. That's a problem me and my family used to have when my kids were young. I would tell my family, my mom. I would tell my sisters, don't be sending him back here with all them Pop-Tarts. We don't eat like that. My son go eat his fresh fruits and vegetables, his cu cucumber salad. We've been eating this way for years. But what they send home every time they send my baby back home? Big old box. N not just the five Pop-Tarts in a the box. They got to send the 10-pack back. I'm like, are you kidding me? So these things would cause problems because they was crossing my what? My boundary. I would tell him, you can eat, he can eat that at, at your house. Don't send my baby back. So we would clash because I wouldn't budge. You don't be sending him back here with all that junk food. So you will have problems. It will sometimes cost you some relationships because remember, when you collide on the highway, the cement block ain't moving. Number two, it will protect you from unnecessary pain. When you know that you've been addicted to someone and you have been in a, 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 a illegal relationship with them, according to the kingdom of God, you're trying to stay clean and pure in your loins. Why would you keep texting this person? Talk about how you doing. I'm just checking on you. No. You got to set that boundary. I, I'm not I'm not having no more communication with this person. So this is where pain continues to work in some people's life because they won't set the boundary to get away from that person who is a mighty temptation. And you end up in all this pain towards the father because you know that you unclean and you know you're putting yourself at risk because you don't want a whooping from God. Amen. Number three. It, it helps you to learn to appreciate your value. Oh, yes, friends. When you set them boundaries, you start taking inventory of how important you are. That's why you start setting up them boundaries. You're not going to keep trampling over what, what I'm saying. This is my life. <laughs> this is my house. These are my values. Shoot, shoot. This is me. I'm doing me. And you learn to appreciate yourself. Number four. 
You can get more done. Once you set your boundaries, you'll be surprised how things keep flowing when you learn to maintain everything that you're doing. Just get up and knock it out. Just do it, friends. Just do it. And you'll be surprised how much time you're saving. You're like, man, I'm getting this done. My house is clean. It smells good. I'm always just coming into you be feeling good and you're getting more done because you're, you're you're not finding yourself in these slumps because everything is in its place you feel good and you don't have the same old leeches because people are leeches friends and they slow you down when they're texting you and calling you all the time what you doing same thing i was doing five minutes ago what you doing <laughs> besides bugging me <laughs> so friends when you set boundaries you get more done, especially when you identify a leech, because some people, they, they'll never grow up because you keep letting them be your, your dump. Okay. Enough said about that one. Last but not least is number five. When you set those boundaries, the most important thing about it, it protects you from sin. It protects you from unnecessary warfare. For example, ladies, when you keep wearing all them tight clothes claiming you're a follower of Jesus, but he can't get you to cover up that booty yet. You you won't cover up that cleavage. You won't cover cover up them legs. You got on all them mini skirts and all your little sexy look. Y'all know I keep I keep coming for y'all with y'all scandal sandals. Friends, listen. That's why you keep masturbating and fornicating because you still worship in your body and your vanity is the gateway to your insanity because why? You don't have no boundaries. You don't have no internal value for the kingdom of God. That clearly tells us we should be modest in our apparel. And the father gives us great leeway, ladies. It's not like he's, you know, sitting up here, you know, with this big, you know, dun -dun. All he's saying is cover up that body. Y'all know what you're doing. When we still can see your breasts and we can see your silhouette, y'all know what y'all doing. Mm -hmm. And then you be the main one complaining. You ain't got no peace. You ain't got no joy. And you're confused. You can't understand the scriptures. You a hot mess. Why? Because you're grieving the Holy Ghost. So come on, friends. There you have it. Five boundaries or, or five things you can expect with your boundaries. And I'm telling you, friends, my life drastically changed when I became a partaker of my own personal values or boundaries. Because that's really what it is. Because you value you, you, you will set those boundaries. And sometimes people say you being mean, you being over the top, and you just say, yep, I am. God bless you, my friends. Till next time.